Hey, now my special guest today is Jeremy Smith. He's Director of Communication Technology at Grant Station. He does it all, and you'll probably hear it. Stay awake, because his voice is just so, you know, soothing. You might want to tend to fall asleep. If you got your heater on, turn the heater off so you can just pay attention. But Jeremy does um, developing audio and video content for the websites. He's in handles the internal and external tech issues. He has a BA in journalism and volunteers as a weekly on-air nonprofit radio station in Fairbanks, Alaska. I know I messed that up. Jeremy, you got to go ahead and take this. Take it away, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's not a problem at all. It's just because, I mean, yeah, I've been, um, I've been with Grand Station for many, many years. Uh, I believe it's approximately 12 or 13 years is how long I've been here. And I did want to let everyone know, um, you may hear him a little bit later on. I have Kevin Peters with us, also from Grand Station. He does all the work in our database. He finds all the grants we have listed. He is our basically lead researcher. So you are very, very lucky to have him with you today. So if you have research questions or, you know, questions about finding funders, Kevin is here. And the best way, as Aretha said, to talk with him is to use the Q&A section. Just write in your question there. Now, if you want to talk and just chat and say hello, chat section is perfect for that. It's just there's so many of us today and it's going to be flying by so fast. If you have a question, Q&A, if you want to just say that's a great idea or Jeremy, you need to drink some water, you can put that into the chat section and I'll be happy to make sure I drink some water there. Um, my name is Jeremy Smith. I'm Gratitations um, Communication and Technology Director. And Kevin is here. He lives on the Oregon coast and he again works in our US charitable giving database, as well as all of our areas of research here on Grant Station. And I host all of our online offerings. And, you know, as Rita said, I also deal with all the technical issues that happen here at Grand Station. So I'm going to go ahead and revisit what Aretha did, and we're going to make sure the chat is good and anyone who's coming in now. If you could type in the chat box just a few words about your organization, I'm talking like four, four words that sum up what you do. Um, that'll give us some idea of what people are focusing on. And this is done, be done in the chat. And then we'll have some ideas for what to use when we do searches a little bit later on. We can pull this information a little bit on, a little bit later on. And I want to just check and see if, if Kevin is there. So Kevin, can you can you hear me talking and can you see the chat right now? Can see the chat, hear you, Jeremy. And as Aretha said, very soothing. I think uh, you're going to do great. <laughs> I think we'd both put you to sleep, unfortunately, so I apologize for that. I'll try to keep it lively, and we'll try to keep it down to our hour amount of time. We might go a little over with questions, but really, if you can give me your attention for about an hour, you're going to walk off knowing if GrantStation is a good fit for you. And if you haven't used GrantStation before, you're going to learn about our three key tools that'll make your life so much easier as you do your fundraising research. So I'll be providing you with an overview, really, of everything Grant Station has to offer, along with really a look of how you can do your grant research on our website. Now, what's important to note, and this is something Aretha mentioned, is like Grant Station usually is kind of pricey. I mean, we do have a lot of tools here and a lot of funders available for you, and we usually charge about $699 a year for access to everything I'm going to show you today. Today. And tomorrow only, Aretha, tell me if I'm wrong on this, you have access to Grand Station for the low, low cost of only $99. Is that correct? I'm going to take that as a yes, because you can pick up Grand Station for only $99 just today and tomorrow only on TechSoup. So hopefully you're already a member of TechSoup and TechSoup is a great resource. So if you're not, you should become a member, but you can pick up Grand Station for the low price of $99. And that's just today and tomorrow. So if you're on the fence, you're like, well, Jeremy, Grand Station, what can it really do for me? Well, guess what? I'm going to show you everything you can do on Grand Station. So let me tell you a little bit about what Grand Station is and what Grand Station features. And it's really a set of searchable databases filled with current grant opportunities. We also provide tools and tutorials on grant seeking and writing. And we also keep you up to date on the latest philanthropic trends. Now, all the grant maker profiles on GrantStation, both government and private, are actively 
accepting requests. This is very important. Or letters of inquiry from a variety of organizations. Now, you may have used some other grant research services, including Google, where you do your research, you get hundreds or thousands of returns, which is great, but it leaves you this really long list of potential funders that you have to screen through without really knowing how relevant they are to your specific need, or if you can, or more importantly, if you even should apply to them. Our job at GrantStation is to pre-screen grant makers. So the time you spend researching generates a list of, this is key, grant makers that may truly accept a request to fund your organization's program or project. So really think of us as your backroom research team. We're pre-screening funders, so we're feeding you the most relevant ones for your program or project. Again, everything you find on GrantStation is open for request or letters of inquiry. I'm saying that multiple times because this question comes up. Jeremy, what differentiates, differentiates you from everyone else out there? And sure, there's you know a foundation center, there's other organizations. And the big difference is everything we have listed, you can apply for. We don't have the historical information for organizations that are no longer offering funding. Everything we have, you can apply for. But we also give you the tools to make sure it's someone you should apply to. And that's really key. And we'll talk about that when we get into the tools section of what we do in today's, um, what we do on our website. And it'll be a part of today's tour. So besides the rich grant research information that we have, we also published three different free newsletters. And you can sign up for them today, whether or not you become a member. And you can find them here under public resources, under newsletters. We have the GrantStation Insider. This is a uh, weekly newsletter, and it features 10 distinct opportunities for US-based nonprofit organizations. We also have our Canadian Insider. That's 10 unique funding opportunities geared towards Canadian organizations. And finally, we have our International Insider. This and the Canadian both go out monthly, and these feature 10 international funding opportunities broken down into global, regional, and government sections for nonprofits that are either based in the US or based in a different country, and they can get funding for that. So if you're in the US and you do work in, say, Africa or within, say, Uganda, you are able to find funding that will support you, even if you aren't based in Uganda. And we have all that differentiated in our database, and we'll talk more about that when we go through our international databases a bit later on in today's tour. So. As I mentioned, all of our newsletters are here in our public resources. Everything in the public resources section is available to you without a membership. So everything here, you don't have to be a member, but everything else you see, you'll be able to access as a member of GrantStation. So this is where you can find links to trend track. This is where we have our Pathfinder tool. This is where we have our Benchmarker tool. These are both things that you can access for free without requiring a membership. But this is also where you can find links to our blog, our state of grant seeking survey and reports, our track success in depth magazine articles, more information about our Arnova partnership. All these great resources are available to you for free from GrantStation in our public resources section. So without a membership, public resources, everything else with a membership. It's an easy way to keep that in mind. And again, only $99 for membership. So near the top of our page, we have sort of the three links to our main key features. First, find your grant makers. Second, build strategy. And third, write proposals. So when you click on find grant makers, this is the search section. This is where all the databases are located along with some additional research articles. Next, our build strategy section. This is where you can access tools that'll help you build a solid grant seeking strategy. And we'll talk more about that today, including those interactive tools that I mentioned. We have three that we'll be going over in, in detail. And finally, we have write proposals. This is where you'll find step-by-step -step tutorials. This is how you can write a compelling letter of inquiry, how you can write a full grant proposal, and you can even view award-winning proposals, proposals that have already won funding. You can see what was done right. And we actually just finished, I believe this year, so let me pull that up because I, I do the website, so I kind of know we did, but I just do it anyway. So right here, if you look at the winning grant proposal competition for 2021, as a member, you have access to download all of these proposals. You can see what worked for their specific need. We have it broken down into various sections as well, whether they were focusing, say, on federal purposes or focusing on just a, a private grant maker. You can see what worked. 
you can also see our, our grant prize proposal. That's our clever little play on words. So you can see what was our favorite proposal. It went through a large group of people who were screening the proposals to see which was the best one, which best summed up what you want in a proposal. So there is some excellent information here. This is all available to you as a member of GrantStation. So if I go back to our homepage, you can get there by clicking on our main logo. And you're here on the homepage of GrantStation. If we scroll down the front page, I'm going to take you to our funding alert section so you can see what an actual record looks like on GrantStation. So as we go down the page, the very bottom, we have our, our funding alerts broken down into national, local, Canadian, and international. These change every week, and these alerts are really carefully curated and written by people like Kevin to provide you with the most current information about a specific grant opportunity. So we'll click on this one right here, Vanguard Charitable. Now, all our database profiles are written in a narrative format. Um, we really feel this allows us to provide you with detailed information about the grant maker and their specific programs. So on the left hand side is the actual profile. This breaks down their specific areas of interest along with their specific application procedures if they have any. On the right hand side, this is where you can find all the information such as saving it to your dashboard, which we'll talk more about in a moment, any social media links, for instance, Vanguard Charitable only has a LinkedIn account, you can visit their website. You can see member insights. This is what other people have said about this particular funding opportunity, if they work with them, what their experience was. You can also mark it as not applicable for you, so it won't show up as you do your searches. This was a request that we had come in from people who've used our database. So we make changes and we make modifications based on the input from our users. So if you have a good idea, let us know. We'll probably incorporate it. You can print it, of course, and you can also email it to yourself. And then you have all the actual specific information, contact information, any additional contact, who can apply, what's the EIN number, is there a link to the IRS 990 form? And there is, and you can view that right here on irs.gov. And right at the very bottom, you have a date stamp for when it was last updated. So all of these types of information, um, this has gone through by our researchers like Kevin, who can go through, take all this information, collect it, look at IRS 990s, look at their website, look at all the information, and then we draft a sort of proposal of what it looks like, send it to the funder, they then look this over, give us some changes if necessary, we enter it into our database then, and only at that point do we make it live for all of our members. So it goes through a multi-step process, everything we have on our database. And this is another thing that separates us from the competition. Everything we have is basically done by humans. We don't use computers just to go ahead and lift various key phrases or list incorrect information. Everything goes through a human. It's being watched by humans and being modified by humans. And I'm not trying to say, you know, humans are better than robots, but everything we have here is hand touched. So everything you see here has been looked at by multiple people and gone through multiple steps before it's listed in our database. That's why we really feel the information that we have listed is information that is good and actionable for your specific organization. And also, if we have an, an organization, say Vanguard Charitable says, you know, we're no longer accepting unsolicited requests, or we're only going to give funding to Aretha and no one else, we would then remove them from our active listings so that members don't waste their time applying to unresponsive organizations. I mean, it's great for Aretha because now she can apply to that, but not for everyone else looking. That's another thing that separates us from our competition. So there's multiple ways we are different. Our whole focus is to help you find funding fast and effective and efficient. We don't want you wasting your time when you get into actually writing that those applications. And our researchers really are focused on publishing quality information that makes your job easier. So what we also have, and what I want to show you now, is uh, available from here on the top in our public resources section. And that's one of the first tools I wanted to mention, and that's our Pathfinder tool. So I'm gonna open that up right here. This is a free tool you can access today. You don't even need a membership to get in here. This is really a tool we developed to help develop your career path as a grants professional. So this is a library of resources in the areas of grant research, writing, management, as well as strategic planning. And we feel all these different resources can strengthen your ability to secure grant awards. So to use this area, you can either browse through all the different options we have, 
or you can use the Find Your Path tool and get a customized curriculum for your learning plan. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. We're gonna go ahead and use the Find Your Path tool. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that up here. It's really straightforward. Um, you start off by deciding what's your role. Well, I'm a grant writer. So I'm gonna click that box and then click next. And then from here, what's my experience level? Well, I'm pretty experienced. I know what I'm doing and I'll click next. And then what do I wanna learn more about in the grant life cycle? So this is where I can choose a specific, specific area to get more information about. So I need to learn a little bit more about grant management because I can get grants, but I don't know what to do once I have them because that's a very important consideration. So we'll click on get recommendations at this point. Now we are developing our customized curriculum, pulling from all the different information that we have. You can print the recommendations or you can download the recommendations and it breaks everything down into various sections such as conferences. So here's our timely event section. So here's all the conferences available that will deal with uh, grant management and will appeal to an experienced grant writer. Here's the live webinars that we might wanna think about taking. And usually there's a lot. We our, our, our researcher who does this spends her days going through all the resources that are out there, and there are lots of them, and we've assembled them into a downloadable curriculum so you can see what's out there, where is it, and learn more about them. All these links you can see here take you to specific articles, and this is our quick study section, so here's articles and reports. And if there is a price associated, and often there is a price, and it's not something that we are controlling the price of, it's just something we found a resource out there, it fits these parameters, there's a little dollar sign next to it, so you know that there is a price connected to learning more about this particular resource. And this is something you can do for free right now. This is a way if you're thinking, or say your boss says to you or your, your board of directors, or maybe your director comes and says, hey, do you want some more training? And you say to yourself, I don't know what kind of training is out there. Pathfinder will show you all the training that's out there, all the conferences you can go to, all the webinars you can take, all the articles you can read. And as you can see, this is a very long page and I could spend a long time going over and breaking this down, but we have a finite amount of time today. So I won't spend any more time on this than I have to. So I'm gonna go ahead and back up here. And if you see here at the top, always public resources, you can jump back into anywhere you want and we'll jump back to the main page of Pathfinder. But as I mentioned, you can then break this down further by getting specific um, search resources from a specific category that you want. Or again, as I mentioned, by browsing the specific listings available within each library. This is updated on a regular basis. You will find information that's current and upcoming, not past information. I hope you see that trend we have here at GrantStation, just to make sure everything is current and up to date and can help you right now. That's our big focus here at GrantStation. So I'm going to click the big logo. Where will that take us? Back to the home page of GrantStation. So let's turn to the process now of finding funding for an organization. How do you go about searching here on GrantStation? Well, as you may have figured out from my description earlier, simply go to find grant makers, and then you have access to all of our different search databases. So you have our US charitable, our US federal, US state government, Canadian charitable, Canadian government, and then international charitable, as well as a couple of articles on search chips and search terms. Now today's focus isn't specifically on how to find funding for your specific need. We actually have a tour we do on a monthly basis that goes over how to use keyword research and all those aspects. We're focusing more on tools today. So I'm gonna gloss over searching a little bit and I'm sure Kevin is probably busy answering your questions as they come in. Please feel free to do that through the Q&A section. He knows this database forward and backward and basically helped populate it to the point it is today. So he knows what's in there. Again, it's a rare opportunity that you have the researcher, the lead researcher, to be able to break down everything he has. So I recommend take advantage of that, ask him a couple questions, maybe try to stump him, then he'll try to stump me. It's a friendly rivalry we've had going for years. So feel free to do that as well. And I can say that because I'm currently in charge of the microphone. So I can say whatever I want and Kevin has to deal with the repercussions. I apologize, Kevin. So let's hey, look Jeremy, at some I of our- I won't try to stump <laughs> you here, but here's a good one that um, I'm sure you can answer. So we have the $99 grant station deal right now through TechSoup. Yes. What does it cost to join TechSoup? Oh, now I'm hoping Aretha is here and can I answer that. I am still here. It's oh, excellent. Free. It's free to become a member of TechSoup. All you need is your 501c3. 
So awesome. really, you're looking at a time investment and $99. And that's about it, I'm assuming. That's it. That's a superpower right there, I have to say. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> that's a good one, Kevin. Didn't stump me, though. So looks like I have to continue the tour. So let's go ahead and do some searches now. We're going to click on Find Grant Makers. And I'm going to start by taking a look at our U.S. state government section, and I'm going to break down some of the ways that you can do some research here. And again, this is some of the ways that separate us from our competition. So in the U.S. state government section, you can it's broken down by specific state. Um, I heard someone earlier say they were in Connecticut, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Connecticut at this point. So this is taking us to a specific state based page. Every state and District of Columbia have one of these pages including Puerto Rico as well. So here you have a breakdown sort of of the type of support we offer, which includes contracts, grants, information, loans, miscellaneous support, as well as training technical assistance. On the left hand side up here are general resources. This is for putting together your statement of need. What other options are available on the state based level? You have a date stamp for when it was last updated, when we're going to do the next update, which is coming up very soon, as you can see. And again, if you have any questions, you can always email us directly. But you can see it's broken down into specific categories. So here's a link for all the arts offerings on the state level in Connecticut. And you can find on this page grants as well as miscellaneous support listings. So looking under civic affairs under the corrections category, they don't have any grants specifically, but they do have information available. So you see it's a quick at a glance way of seeing what's available on a state based level. There are very few places that offer you state based research and that's one thing you can find here on grant station and also just planting the seed again. Right here you see a save option that's so you can save this to your dashboard very powerful tool we'll mention a little bit later actually coming up very soon as we're going through our research in addition to doing your state-based research you can also do your federal research here on grant station now many of you have probably used grants.gov for doing your federal research that can be a very convoluted site, although they often go through and make changes and updates. Unfortunately, those changes and updates often cause more problems. What we have done is taken everything at grants.gov and given you a clean front end so you can do your research that way. You can search by who's eligible to apply for it, what specific areas of interest are available on the federal level, maybe by what funding agency is currently offering the funding source. You can search by CFDA number, by funding opportunity number, or even by those specific keywords. So let's just do a quick search under eligible applicants, nonprofits with a 501c3, and that'll pull up every listing currently that's active. That's the key. Everything is active on grants.gov. You could then further narrow this down by adding in specific search terms. Say your area of interest is education. So now we're narrowing it down specifically to nonprofits with 501c3 and an interest in education. Then you can sort it by agency, sort it by post date when it's closing, or even by the opportunity title. And again, you can save that to your dashboard. This is something you can't do on grants.gov and that your competition doesn't allow you to do. You can save it and sort all of it in one key location here on GrantStation. So any funder you find that looks like a good fit for your need, you can save it to your dashboard. And as you go back later and use the decision matrix tool to see if it fits for you, which we'll talk about in just a moment, you can then add or remove it and have it progress through your grant seeking calendar. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. But again, you can do your federal research here and your state based research here. But Jeremy, you say, I don't want to spend the rest of my life applying for federal grant, it can feel that way because federal grants can be very um, convoluted. And I don't want to look on the state level. What's the point? The point and the reason to do this step when you're researching to look at state and federal is to let any private funders that you find know that you've done your research. You know what's available on the state level. You know what's available on the federal level. And you know that they know what's available. This really speaks to your credibility as an organization. So if you know what's out there and what's available, I can guarantee the funding organization is probably aware of that as well. So the last thing you want to do is go to them and say, there's nothing out there. They're like, well, here's all these grants actually in Connecticut that do the exact same thing you're asking us for money for. Why didn't you talk to them? If you do this step, you do this research, 
and you see there's nothing available, you can say to the funding organization, after our research, we have found nothing that's a good fit for us right now. That's why we feel you are the best organization to help us with our specific need. It's an important step to do, often overlooked. So something to keep in mind, it sort of goes with the superpower of clarity, I believe as well. So this provides you with clarity, moving forward, working with the funder and finding the specific funding you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause for a second, Kevin. Is there any questions we should tackle right before we get into US Charitable, do you feel? Uh, yeah, I was just in the middle of typing one out, but a couple people have asked it, like how much time um, do you think people will need to spend on grant station like with the the research but also from the perspective of a newbie like if someone's new to grant seeking sure no that's um if you're new and again we have a finite amount of time and there's so much on grant station if you're new and you're not really sure you know what do i have to do we recently rebuilt this entire section which is called build a strategy this walks you through all the steps you need to do if you're a newbie even if you're as experienced probably not advanced but if you're experienced even there's information here that helps you it lets you set your objective I and mean, what's the whole point of getting funding and that's how you can use this tool our r3 create your infrastructure how are you going to deal with finding funding this is how to develop your grants how to assemble a grants team something we touched on in our last webinar that we did here with TechSoup, which was with our ceo cynthia adams and myself also, how to prepare for grants management. How do you deal with the grant once you have it? Then you have that step of finding the right grant maker. So to the question, how long would you spend? It really depends on what you have in place. Like if I walked in today and I'm like, I'm ready for funding. It's like, well, do I have a 501c3? No. Okay, there's some steps you have to do to get that in place first. But let's say you had that in place, you had an infrastructure, you even had someone who could focus on finding funding. Once you know how to use GrantStation, I think maybe an hour or two, you would spend getting everything in place and set up. You can set up alerts that are, can be notified when different funding opportunities are changed. And then just checking back periodically to see what's new and you can also then use GrantStation as your dashboard. So actively using dashboard to do hardcore searches, again, an hour or two, but then it's a tool that you can come back to and use. It's just like buying a hammer. You don't use the hammer every single day, but when you need a hammer, you need a hammer. That's what GrantStation is. It's sort of the hammer in your grant toolkit. Oh, I just did that on the fly. I'm so proud of myself, Kevin. I really am proud of myself. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll give you one more before we move yeah. on then, Jeremy. Yeah, perfect. Um, so we're talking about Grant Station. Clearly, we have a very competitive price because I know I've, I've checked out some of the other places out there and some of them go into the thousands of dollars a year. But with that, how does our the size of our database compare to some of these other funders or other funding databases out there? That's that's a great question. It comes up often. Um, it depends on the database specifically. I know Kevin spends a lot of time in there and might have a better number than me, but I can give you the last time I've gone through and done a count. At any given time, we have upwards of, I believe, 10 to 15,000 active funders listed. Does that sound right, Kevin? Uh, yeah, some of those have been pulled. So right now, I think we're right about around 11,000 total funders. But the key word you used there, Jeremy, was active. Can you tell yes. me what that means? Yeah, and this is something I mentioned earlier, but I'm going to keep saying it again because people don't quite realize that. When you do a search on Google, you're like, Google, grants, Jeremy, money. Great. You get 50 results. Perfect. These people will give money to Jeremy for funding. Why would I need GrantStation? Because those were only being offered in 2016, or they're only offering to Jeremy's who don't live in Alaska. In fact, they hate Jeremy's in Alaska. They don't want them to have any funding. That's why active is important. Not only is it active, it's open to a wide range of organizations. Using our tools to narrow it down and find that perfect funder is what GrantStation provides. So that active funder is one you can actively pursue you can research them you can see if they're a good fit because you know they are currently giving out funding or support or donations or whatever your specific need is so active is the key what we have listed 
is actionable. What we have listed, you can apply for and potentially win that funding for your organization. That's our biggest key separator from everyone else out there right now. Okay, and can I throw something in, Jeremy? Please do. Someone out there in the uh, the chat wants us to name our competitors. Now, we normally don't do that. It's like if I was like giving a tour for Nike shoes and I'm like, well, you might also want to consider Reebok. And Puma, but, you know, yeah. and Adidas, yeah. Yeah, but, but some of these are huge, well-known organizations. But the one thing I do want to point out is all of our records get looked at at least yearly. Um, we've been on some of the other databases, even the big one. And some of those, you know, they're like last updated 2019. And you're, you're never going to see that with GrantStation. Every, every one of these gets looked at every year. If we got deadlines coming up, uh, some of these we're looking at way more often. So we do do our best to have the, some of the most up-to-date uh, information around. And that's really the key thing that you'll find at GrantStation. And not only are we... I wouldn't say we're a scrappy organization because we have about 19 employees. We've been around for a long time, over 20 years. So the key is, is we know what works. We have a pedigree of people working at GrantStation. Even our CEO founded GrantStation because she was tired of dealing with these databases that were out of date, that weren't actionable, that had information that didn't fit for her specific needs, and that she had no one to talk to. All of that is remedied in what we offer at Grand Station. So it's very easy to find you know, our competition out there if you want to, and that's fine. But the key difference between us and our competition is that today you can pick us up for $99. That's really the bottom line. So let's do some searches. So here we are in our US charitable database. One of the great things about our US charitable database is it lists thousands of different funder profiles, including independent, family, community, and corporate foundations, corporate giving programs, faith-based grant makers, I saw we had a couple in the chat, as well as basically any associations we found with grant making programs. You can search through these profiles by geographic scope, area of interest, type of support, name, and by keyword. So the content area here on the left-hand side gives you a brief breakdown of how to do a search. The right-hand side, this is where you enter in all your specific criteria. So let's do a quick search. Uh, let's say that I'm in California, but I do work across the border in Nevada, and I want to provide schools with information about the importance of activity, hygiene, and obesity prevention. So we'll start with our geographic scope. This is going to see how big our grant universe is. So we'll start by choosing a specific state grant maker. And again, we work in California and across the border in Nevada. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on California at this point. And you'll see you get an immediate update right here, the number of results. So now we're gonna add in another state. At this point, it's Nevada. So I'm gonna click that one. See the number increase slightly right there. And now we're gonna add in grant makers who give across all states at this point. You see that number goes up drastically. So at first we were just looking at funders who only give within California, then funders who give in California and within Nevada. Now we're looking at funders that give across all states in the USA. And you can say, you can see quickly here under geographic scope, the giving aspects. So they give across the USA, but sometimes they have a geographic focus as well. And that varies by request for proposals for the specific funder, which is the 100,000 strong in the America's Innovation Fund. And as you can see, you have multiple pages. You can change the number that you see per page right here. You can sort them by their scope, sort them by the grant maker name. And of course, you can save them to your specific dashboard as you go through. But in addition to just geographic scope, again, this is seeing how big your grant universe is. Let's narrow it down to our specific needs. Again, education is my focus. I'm working on an after school program. We're focusing on the importance of activity, hygiene, and obesity prevention. So we can use some of our other areas of interest. So first off, let's do a targeted population. We can narrow it down to a specific population we want to focus on. In this case, we're focusing on children and youth. So let's click that box right there. Hope you're seeing it's just a matter of clicking boxes to find funding. So when people are wondering how long you would spend here, it's really however long you want to spend because the searches go so fast. So we're looking at our targeted population of children and youth in the specific geographic scope. Let's add in some specific areas of interest. Now, now I'm gonna try to stump Kevin. Kevin, how many areas of interest do we have? 
If we include types of support, uh, things like seed money, uh, general operating support, we have at last count, unless I miscounted, it was 233. And I'm going to pop up that search terms page in the chat so everyone can see what these terms are and what the specific things um, you can search for are. And you would find out in our regular monthly tour that we offer how to use the search terms section to find out your specific search terms for your need. We don't have enough time to cover that today in this tool focused tour because we're still just going over how to do a quick search on GrantStation. So let's go back to our education section. And we could add in specifically funding just for general education if we wanted, or funding for a specific need, say early childhood or health and physical education, or maybe something for libraries or literacy. This is where you can narrow it down. And at any point, clicking the little eye right here lets you know specifically what topics are included under that subtopic. You can find all this on the search terms page. But if you're someone who flies by the seat of your pants, maybe that's your superpower, you would simply hover over the eye right here, and then you can know at a glance, oh, yeah, this is for after-school programs. Perfect. I'm going to check that. So here's the funding available for after-school programs with my targeted population of children and youth across these two states and the entire U.S. Well, let's now add in another area of interest, and you can add in as many as you want. But what we're doing is we're narrowing down our universe. Be careful not to narrow yourself out of any potential funding options. But always remember, you simply can uncheck one of these boxes and take a step backwards and then see what was available there. So maybe you narrowed it down to focused and there's nothing for that specific left-handed purpose. But if you go back to people with hands, now you have options. I always use left-handed, but I'm just saying that's something to keep in mind. You can always take a step back and then relook and see what your universe has. If you narrow down so specific, you can't find funding for your specific need. And also this is a rule of thumb. Keep in mind, you're looking for funding for your project, not specifically your organization. Few funders will fund your organization just because they're awesome. And I know your organization is awesome, but they want to fund a project. They want to make an impact. So keep that in mind, put together a project that will help support your organization. It'll help fund your organization, but your organization won't get direct funding. You know, you won't get carte blanche approach for using the money for anything you want. Funders want to support a project. They want to make an impact. They want their name associated with your good work. They don't want to say, oh, Jeremy Smith brought to you by GlaxoCline. It, it doesn't work that way. That's, that's, <laughs> that's advertising. You're looking for funding for a specific project. So keep that in mind as you're looking for funding. If you're having problems, look at the project. The project can almost always get funding. It's this basic organization, basic funding for the organization that's more difficult to find. But it does exist, though. And one of the places you can find that is if we go down to our type of support. This is where you can find funding for collaborations or capital building funds or money just for equipment, or as Kevin was saying, for the other options that you have, project planning, project support, or maybe you're a new organization, you need some grassroots support. You can see here, if it's grayed out, there's no options available. But if it's not grayed out, there is an option available in that type of support. So you would click on that specific thing. Let's say, again, our after-school program, we're looking for equipment for our specific needs. We're down to 24 results. We can narrow this down even further, adding in more specific options. So if we go down to health and wellness, I know from doing keyword research before I got on today, that there is an option here for healthy eating and nutrition, as well as healthy lifestyles and obesity prevention. Okay, so I'm gonna click that box here now. Now we're getting down into, I feel, actionable results. Now here's all of our current search criteria here in the left-hand side. And what you can do at any point, another keynote of GrantStation, you can save this criteria. So you can rerun this search in the future. So like I said earlier, how much time will you spend on GrantStation? Once it's set up, not a lot. So maybe an hour or two to set this up, set up your best search criteria that gave you the best results. And then you just come on and rerun that search in the future. What's new? If it's new since your last search, there'll be a little icon right here that says new. And then you'll know, oh, that's a new one. I should look at that really quickly. We try to make it quick and efficient and effective when you're looking for funding. So you can find all the funders you need to get on with your work, to get on with writing the grant 
or taking your grant application and fitting it into that specific request for that funder. We don't want you to spend your time having to find the grants, having to organize where all the grants are. Where do I go to find the funding? The funding listing is available on GrantStation. You can get back to your focus, which shouldn't be just writing grants. Unless you're a grant writer, then GrantStation is even better for you because you can find all the grants that you need. So something to keep in mind. But as you can see, all the service criteria we have here on the right-hand side gives us all of these listings right here. So at this point, let's go ahead and save one and I'll show you our dashboard. So I'm gonna save the Community Foundation for Monterey County. And I just so happen to be in Monterey County. So this works perfect for my need. If I scroll up to the top now, I can click on my dashboard and then I can take a look at everything available on the dashboard. So I'm gonna jump into the introduction here, which gives you links to everything. So within your dashboard, this is where you can create a sort of focus your grant research by making a project description worksheet for your dashboard. This is really a summary of what your initiative, what your project is that needs funding. You can describe the needs, itemize your budget, select effective search criteria for that. So this is great for working in teams. Maybe you have one or two people in your office who are focusing on this, maybe even two or three. You can go ahead and share that specific account for that, but at $99, you can have multiple accounts and everyone can have their own dashboard, which is really awesome on top of that. You can also export all this information at any time and use it within Excel or any type of database or spreadsheet program. This is where you can also access that saved criteria I mentioned, those saved grant makers, and you can also make a plan. This is where you can add your saved grant makers in order to prioritize your requests and track their progress. So let's go to our saved grant makers. And I just saved that one grant maker. And then I can go ahead and see what grant makers I have listed. And then I can basically add that specific funder to my plan. I can also add it to a specific project as well. But the most important thing I wanna show you now is the decision matrix. So remember, I'm doing this obesity program. I'm trying to figure out how it works. Here is the Community Foundation for Monterey County. This is the one that I saved. I'm going to go ahead and start the matrix and show you what this is. Now, this is a tool that our CEO developed years ago, and it's a very simple tool, and it really allows you to see at a glance if someone is a good fit for you. You've done your research. You found a funder. They seem like a good fit. This lets you prioritize your leads. So you're focusing on the ones with the most likeliest possibility of success. And really, you start with some mandatory criteria. Do you meet their eligibility requirements? And then you give it a specific number. And that number helps determine the next step. So let's say, do we meet their eligibility requirements? Definitely, we meet them. I did my research, we fit. Is the funding consistent with the mission of our organization? Uh, yeah, I think that works too. So we'll go to the next part. Now it's the scored criteria. What are the funder's priorities? Are we in their geographic giving area? Do we address their area of interest? Do we serve their targeted population? And we have links to what all of these mean and how to find out this information. A lot of this comes into secondary research. Once you've found a funder, which is primary research, you do secondary research, which is looking at their website, looking at their 990 form. All this information would give you links and explain how to do that through our build section. That's why if you are new to grant seeking, I recommend going to the build section and just reading through it, maybe 30 minutes, and you'll figure out, oh, this is what I have to do. This is the next step. But back to the decision matrix, you go through, you answer with your specific numbers. Basically, it's zero to three is what you're looking at. And you put in your specific, what you think based on this effort and timing, and once you have your total store, and you can, of course, save it or discard the changes, you then know if they're a good fit or not a good fit for your specific need. So if I come back here, you can see, oh, this has a six, on my decision matrix. But if I look close to the decision matrix, I probably want to consider dropping them from my list if they're zero to 15. If they're 16 to 30, these could be backup funders. But if they're over 31, this is when I should start going on for the application. This is when I would move on to the build section. Then I would go ahead and add this to my specific plan. So if I added this particular funder to my plan, Community Foundation for Monterey County, let's say I add it to my plan. We now have an option on the dashboard called My Plan. 
And we have webinars and we have recordings that go in depth into how to use this section. And again, we don't have enough time to spend it going over how all these features can work. But these are just extra things we've added over time to make this even better. But this is where you can edit the specific funder, see where you are in the process. So I'll show you really quickly what you can do. You jump in, you've added to a specific project. Here's our after school health program. I should probably update that for this year. We can set our priority for it. We can add a status. We haven't started yet. How much we've requested. It pulls on the information automatically from the listing. And when do we want to have a draft written by? When do we want it to be submitted by? When do we want our expected decision date? As well as any notes. These dates can then be exported directly to your calendar program right here. So you can be reminded, oh, I need my draft done by this day. You can add it to Google Calendar or your iCalendar as well based on what sort of program you use. These work very easily in that. And this is part of your dashboard. These are part of the features you can do in here. You can save that criteria. You can save your grant makers. You can create a project. You can create a plan. But also more importantly, this is also where you can create a report. So I'm gonna click on reports right now and show you another tool we have at GrantStation. And this is called the R3. Now this is a really sweet little program. I'm very happy. We've gone through so many iterations of this over the last eight years. And now I think it's really in its best form. So all you need to use this is really, you know, a copy of your operating budget and maybe a breakdown of grant awards and maybe a rough idea you know, of the amount and the source. It takes about maybe 10 minutes to do. And once you've gone through this, you can print out the results, you can save it, share it with your staff, your board of directors, et cetera. And it's really helpful when you're doing that strategic planning, what you're gonna do next. So you enter in your specific amounts, enter in your date amounts, your date for your current or your projected. You can do them both or individually by themselves. And you enter in specific funding. What money you're getting from local businesses? What are you getting from community foundations? What are you getting from associations and societies? Entering in these specific numbers. And then you can enter in your non-grant revenue. What gifts are you receiving? What major donor income is coming in? What earned income is coming in? Maybe you have some property that was gifted to you from someone. Are you serving any fees for those services? What endowments do you have? Do you have any planned giving income? Entering in on all that information. And then you run a project based on that. Again, I'm at limited time, but I can go back to my dashboard where I have saved these in the past. So we're going to go ahead and pull one up that I made before, and you can save this at any point. You can, of course, print them out and edit them. You can even make a copy of them and then modify the changes as well. So here you can see the amount of money I put in from May of 2020 to May of 2021 with the projection of May of 21 to May of 2022, seeing the basic increases and whatnot. But the most valuable feature here is this. It's the breakdown visually of where your revenue is and where it's coming from. So here's our current revenue. Here's our projected revenue. So we can see at a glance and we can see how much is grant based, how much is non-grant based. And you can see, oh, maybe we should improve that non-grant revenue and maybe have some more donors come in or maybe do a fund drive of some sort. You can also see where your current grant revenue is broken up. Where is it coming from? Local businesses. We're getting 41% from government funding. We're getting 22% from corporate foundations. And then you may ask yourself, well, is that good? I don't know if that's good or not. Well, if you scroll down a little bit more, you have, of course, more and more breakdowns. You get recommendations based on the information you put in. So if your local business number is not where we think it should be, we give you ideas of what to do. If your corporate giving is in a good spot, you're set. If your corporate foundations are in a good spot, you're set. If they're not good, we give you recommendations of what we recommend you should do based on the numbers you've entered. This is a very, very powerful tool. It's kind of one of those you know, like buried gems we have here at Grand Station, but there's so many of those, it's ridiculous. This is an incredibly powerful tool that I strongly recommend um, that you have access to as a member. And I encourage you to go in and use it just to visually see, oh, this is where we're at. This is where we wanna be. This is really good to know. And then you can save it, print it out, share it with other people as well. So we're running really close to running out of time. And this is one of the problems with Grant Station. I could talk about it forever, but I'm gonna cover a couple more things that we have here. One thing that I mentioned earlier, another tool, and this whole focus today is on tools, is the benchmarker. 
Now, the benchmarker is a way to compare your grant seeking to other organizations similar to you. You can get a customized benchmark from the grant seeking experience of over 3,500 different folks who have responded to our state of grant seeking survey and report. We have one that just started recently. We do this roughly every year. And the benchmark is a way to pull that information out and make it actionable. We love actionable. Well, I love actionable. So let's say, uh, what's my annual budget range? Um, I have a medium budget, you know, 100,000 to a million dollars. Okay. And what's my main mission focus? And this is, it's not always exact because there's such a wide range. And of course, we have a note right here that where you can break it down to specific responses. But let's say I'm focusing on youth development. And let's look at a basic report. This is going to pull up all the information and let you know how many people are similar to you in youth development with this type of budget. So most of these organizations are 11 to 25 years old. Interesting to know. What's the average paid, what's the average staff staff, paid staff size? Well, it's one to five people. So it's a really great way to see what's been happening, breaking down what the amount of funding they've received over time, how long was the grant cycle for what they received. All this information can be customized even further. This is just a quick report I showed you. You could print this as a PDF or you can even export it as a CSV and then play with it in Excel to see exactly how this would fit with your specific needs within your organization. And again, I'm just touching on some of the tools that we have here at GrantStation. These are the main ones, the benchmarker, our R3 tool, and our decision matrix that can really help you with your grant seeking and your grant research. So one last thing I wanted to show you in our public resources section is because I mentioned it just a little bit earlier, is you can also find specific information in our trend track section. This is where you can find our tracks of success, which is a um, basically which is articles that we've written in depth that speak with various professionals around the world, really looking at what's happening in the world of philanthropy in a more magazine in-depth profile. Also, as a part of this section, we have our GS Insights blog. This is our weekly blog, which has many guests, has the thoughts of our staff, what our researchers are seeing out there, what our CEO has discovered in her research. And uh, also, you can find many, many articles written by Kevin, and some of them are very hilarious and very excellent. Um, there is a whole new article recently by the person who deals with our Pathfinder section, all about how to engage digital native donors. How do you do use Bitcoin? How do you use that to receive funds? Can is it is it viable? Is it worth the investment of your time? These are all resources available to you for free in our public resource section. And this is also where you'll find, as I mentioned before, our state of grant seeking report. You can download the full report with the breakdown of all the resources. This is available for free. 2020, the 2021 report's available now. We're currently collecting survey results for 2022. So if you are a nonprofit organization, we encourage you to click this and simply take the survey, roughly 10 minutes, and you can add your views to everyone else's and help people find the funding they need for their organization. So going back to the main page of GrantStation, the few moments we have left, I just want to reiterate, you can currently pick up everything you've seen today and more for just $99, and that's today and tomorrow. It's an incredibly good deal. I'm pretty sure the majority of our content, um, even just the R3 and our tools and decision matrix alone are worth that, not to mention the fact that you can actually find funding as well as a complete how-to when you're getting started, as well as downloading winning proposals or even writing a full proposal. If you've never written a proposal before, we break down all those steps, as well as how to find grant makers and not only US-based organizations, but Canadian, also federal and state and international organizations, either based in the US or based internationally, we have funding opportunities available for them. So I think now is a good time to start transitioning to questions. And I want to thank everybody in case you have to go. I totally get it. We are all busy. We are all Zooming constantly. So feel free if you have to leave, but you will get a recording of this. We will be happy to stick around and answer questions. So Kevin, let's start tackling questions. Mm, so I know we don't want this to sound too much like a sales pitch because a lot of this is about using those tools, but a lot of people are asking about the sale. Um, the big thing is, 
So we don't auto renew, right? You know, this Correct. is a, a, okay. So you get the $99 per year, and then you can either wait for the next, next tech soup sale re up or on our homepage, we do offer other sales throughout the year. Check that out. So even though our regular price is six ninety nine, once you sign up, you're not on the hook for ninety nine this no. year, but then six ninety nine no. next year. Absolutely <laughs> and here's a, not. Oh yeah, that I I would not work here if that's something that happened. And here's yeah. another cool thing. Let's say you currently have Grand Station. You're like oh, but it's not up yet. I don't want to buy. Here's a pro tip: you can stack. So maybe you already have two years. Or maybe you only have you already have a year. Well, you can buy ninety nine dollars, and now we add a year to your memberships. So now you have two years, so it stacks. It doesn't replace. It stacks. It adds on top of your existing. Um, this is something we wanted people to do. We don't want you to waste your money. You can spend your money on many more important things. So this is a very special opportunity we offer with TechSoup. So every year TechSoup offers this special. So once you get in, you'll probably have difficulty not buying Grand Station membership because at $99, it is a ridiculous deal. So just keep that in mind. And with that, Jeremy, can you scroll up to your dashboard? How long is your membership running through? Let's see. I think I, oh, I got to think about renewal in about 28 years. So oh, I better You're get on through, that. Oh yeah, through 2050. Yeah, so if my, you all want to be uh, Grand Station yeah. Shogun level members like let Jeremy, me know with your, I can, uh, I can make reach that out. We'll work something out. We'll work that out. You. you can have a, I can, let you, I can get you 2051 even. There might be a cost involved, but I can make that happen. All right, cool. Um, one of the search-based questions we've got a lot is sure. we've got a lot of questions about limiting it. People are like, what if I don't want to see program support? I was running some searches. They're all coming back as programs. So can we just highlight that types of support search function a bit here? Because a lot of people were asking about that. No problem. And this is one of the great things about GrandStation. You don't have to do the searches in any specific order. I just showed you quickly one way to do that. So if we go down to type of support, this is where you can narrow it down to only having a specific type of support that you want. Now, if you look right now, everything is grayed out. But even though it's grayed out, you can still pull up all the specific funders that offer that specific type of support. We encourage you to have a specific you know, scope of like where you wanna fund your funding for, but you can always click the button and see what's available just within that specific category. So if you don't want it to pull up a certain thing, then you simply select that specific type of support and that's how you can remove it. Excellent. And just there was a bit of confusion about this in every tour we give so when we do the geography that's additive right so if Correct. i choose say minnesota and wisconsin sam right on the border there i'm going to yeah. get funders that are in minnesota or wisconsin correct correct well actually minnesota yeah minnesota or wisconsin but the search itself is boolean based and we can get real fancy into how that works but it's an and based search but so we're focusing on the geographic scope area. We're seeing yep. how so, big our universe is. We're getting everybody, like you said, Kevin. Yep. So geo is or, but every other search is going to be end. And the reason we want to do this is like, say I'm, I'm in Oregon, but also national funders will fund in Oregon. So I can select US and Oregon, bring in all of those. But from there, I want to narrow it down so I can go, you know, art education, and then higher education, to find like higher ed art programs. So that first search for geography, any of your geographic selections, but when you get further down those search terms, it, go, it has to fit all of the criteria, just so people are, are clear about that. Exactly. So that's why I try to differentiate, figure out how big your universe is first with your geographic scope, then add in everything else. So You'll feel, you'll get your pool, then you narrow it down. Figure out who can fit in the pool once you've got your pool. So that's why I encourage you, start with your scope, then worry about narrowing it down to your need. Okay, cool. And my next question is, we're going to see if I gave a bunch of people in the Q&A section the wrong information. Oh, now, I can't wait. I Let's do this. I don't want to make you log out. 
but if you're not logged into Grant Station, you can still sort of run a search and it'll show you the number of results. You just won't be able to see the results. Correctly. Oh, 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 so you gave them my secret. I was going to save that for people who stayed a little bit later. But basically, if you stayed oh. after, no, this is perfect. This <laughs> jump is great. The, jump the gun here. You jump. No, it's perfect. We're just after the top of the hour. We're just answering questions right now. So this is perfect. So let's go ahead and log out of the website. Like, oh, no, who am I? I'm on Grant Station. I don't know anything. So. I want to do a search of Grant Station, but I'm not a member. Well, this is something we built into the website, and it's a feature that I wanted to have because is it a good fit? Am I going to find funders for my need? Let's click on US Charitable. So, oh, it's a member feature. I got to log in. But wait, Jeremy, what's all this? I can still click on boxes? Well, let's go ahead and click on state grant makers. Let's start with your Oregon. Well, there's how many results we have. We just can't see the funders. Okay, so you have 238 based in Oregon. What if I want grant makers to give across all states? Okay, 1,500. What if I want people who will give to just education in general? What's the listing available? Oh, 510 results. Okay, this is something you can do, and I wanted this there as an option. So you can just see at a glance if it's worth it. Maybe you are so specific in your needs that's like, you know, you don't have it. And the only people who I can say that Grand Station is probably not a good fit for is university based organizations because we don't have a lot of higher education funding listed. We have some, but not a ton of higher education funding. So that's the one area I'd say it may not be the best fit for you. But for everyone else, this is a quick way to see what we're going to have available. You can't see the results, you have to pay for a membership but you can see how many results are there. You can see if it's possible. Well, do they tend to give to you know a specific, I mean, I'm looking specifically for corporate foundations. It's like, oh, there's 81 results. Well, maybe I'm also trying to find you know, a grant maker who's based specifically in Hawaii. Well, that's another option. There we have one result that fits all of these specific features that gives across Oregon and the US where the funder is based in Hawaii. It's a corporate foundation and they're interested in funding general education. Like what could this result be? We'll log in or become a member to see it. But this is an option that you can have without even being a member of Grant Station. Excellent, thanks, Jeremy. And sure. the other question we've had tons of repeats on is so, the membership I sign up, it's tied to one email. Can multiple people use that email to, you know, sure. use Grant Station? Yeah, and it's within reason. I mean, if you have like a six group, six people who are accessing it, that's too many. I would really encourage you to get multiple accounts. And if you did want to get another account, well, first of all, ninety nine dollars is an insane price. So that might be something to consider picking up multiple memberships at that price. But if you can't afford that, we can make an arrangement for you. So contact us if you need multiple. We can make a special arrangement if it's within your organization and you need more than one person to access it. But if it's maybe two tops of three people, we understand it's fine if you share that particular login. But I strongly encourage you to have your own login because when you start sharing a dashboard, it gets super messy just because then it's like, well, whose results are those? Are those my results? Are those, are, those, are those Kevin's results? I don't know. So it can get really difficult if you have multiple people going in and changing things left and right. So if you need multiple access, let us know. We have multiple programs that cover that and allow you to pick up multiple access accounts at a lower rate. Excellent. And we had this uh, a similar question this week and a couple of weeks ago on the, the previous tour. So this is also, um, it's good for someone who's a, a grant writer or a grant consultant. You don't need a separate grant station membership for each of your clients. If you're the grant writer, it's just tied to you and you can use that, that same membership for your different clients. And okay. it's funny you mentioned that because I've had one person who is a grant, a grant writer who was asking me questions about the dashboard. And this is where you can really have fun because you can have a project for your specific organization you're working for. So this could be the Save the Chinchillas Foundation. This could be the After School Health Program Foundation. This could be the Animal Welfare Project you know, group. 
these are each of these, imagine each of these are nonprofit organizations that you're assisting as a grant writer. And you can assign all the funders you find to that project. So you can track all of them in one place in your dashboard. So that's one way you can use this as a grant writer. Excellent. Uh, got a two part question coming up. This person, and I'll answer the first part. Okay. And then we can team answer the second part. Perfect. I um, love team answers. Okay. So we have Does GrantStation find the grants or do grant gi givers register with you? Um, so I'll take that part. Um, we do do comprehensive searches through the 990s. Uh, through websites to to find these grant makers. We do occasionally have new grant makers who reach out to us. They want to be in the newsletter to, to let you know, hey, we have this grant program out. How do we get that information? So we do have people reach out to us. Um, we do do email contact with a lot of foundations to make sure the information's up to date. But then the second part, they say, in other words, will I find grants all the way down to local support? So I know we've gone through the states, but what if I'm out in, say, um, Bear County, Texas? Can sure. I find something that's more accurate than just Texas? Oh, yeah, definitely. And this is more of the advanced tech. This is one of the more advanced search features that you can use. And we built this in specifically for this situation. Um, a good example of this, I mean, this is, we'll try that one and we'll see how it works. But um, we'll go ahead and start by choosing Texas from our dropdown. We're going to add in national, give across all states as well. And this is the benefit of using the national option because it, they give across all states, which means they would give in bare Texas. But I get it. If you're looking for local funding, you may want something more specific. specific. But we may not have bare Texas specifically listed. There may not be any funding organizations based in bare Texas. But I understand what you're saying. What you can do is you go all the way down to our keyword section, which we're going to drop down into all the way here. Oh, and, and we're going to test your knowledge of spelling of Texas counties here. So how will we spell Bear County? Okay, Bear County? That's how it's pronounced. Okay. Wait, is this a test? Okay. Well, there's two options here. It could be either like the paint bear or like the Alaskan, you know, don't go out in the wilderness bear. So okay, I'm going to go with B-E-H-R. Bexar, Bexar. Oh, Bexar? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Okay. So what we're doing now by adding this specific um, keyword right here, this is searching through all the records. Again, based on our parameters we have up here, USA and Texas, seeing if this is mentioned. And if someone would give in Bear, Texas, or in this case, Bexar, Texas, we would specifically know that they would be listed. So let's do a quick search and see what pops up. So we have 16 specific results that give, oh, look at that right there, Bexar is included. So this is how you can narrow it down to just a specific county or a specific location using that keyword search to narrow it down. But remember, I'm going to say caution here. You can narrow yourself out of results by using this, but using the keyword section to narrow it down to your specific, uh, your county, your borough, even your city, maybe you're in New York and that can be really messy there. You can narrow it down to one specific thing. That's how you do those searches. Yep. And Hi, can I Jeremy. add something here? Oh, okay. Yeah, Jeremy. Jump in, um, okay. Yeah, just take a couple more questions. Oh, perfect. We were planning just to be out by, I think another five minutes. Is, would that work okay? Yes. Perfect. Thank you for allowing us to stay on. And I appreciate all of you staying and asking questions as well. Okay, Kevin, let's do a couple more. Okay, a couple people did ask, like, say, um, I got a couple people with the memberships. Is there a way to like link dashboards across accounts at all? Or is that something we need to look into? That's something we need to look into. It's something it, it's the dashboard has grown so much in such a short time. We only introduced this about three years ago we've realized just how powerful it is. And what we're working on now is through our partner programs is having organizations be able to link multiple dashboards. So you'll be able to access what someone else within your organization is doing. So for so, now, you can export all the information. So you don't have to worry about losing it if you're working in different versions of GrantStation. But something to keep in mind is we will be working on adding that sort of connection within the next few years. It's something we have had quite a few requests about, especially because people are realizing, well, hey, this is so handy I'm on my own dashboard, but I also want Kevin to have access to all my research. How do I do that without just giving him my password? So we were, we're 
working on finding a solution for that. So it'll work for both people with two different accounts. Okay, cool. And then we did have a pretty decent handful of people in the comments uh, who are working internationally. I, as I was typing away, did we point out the international databases? We didn't have a time. We didn't have a chance. Well, and this is why I encourage you to take our free monthly tour where we go in depth into our international section, our Canadian and other sections. But I'll show it to you really quick. This will be the last thing we probably do. But just like our US charitable section, and this is why Grantation is so easy, once you can do one search, you can do all the searches. So let's say you are doing research within, I don't know, I've been looking at Uganda, Ugandan filmmaking lately. So we'll, let's go ahead and go to Africa. We'll start with the continental grant maker who gives in a specific continent. And then we're gonna add in at this point, a national grant maker who gives in a specific country. So we've chosen Africa. And now I'm gonna go ahead and choose Uganda for my dropdown. And again, this is the geographic scope. This is that or based section we mentioned. And we're also going to select global grant makers have across the entire, you know, the entire world. Then we can narrow it down using specific areas of interest. Say again, we're focused on uh, media. And again, I'm focused on film within Uganda. I'm looking at 65 results. We can narrow that down even further by adding in either another area of interest we want, or maybe a targeted population, or maybe just a type of support. Maybe I just need some equipment for filmmaking within Uganda. So now I have two specific results that specifically fits it. I can see who's eligible for it, either individuals affiliated with an NGO or a nonprofit organization, the scope of the giving, and more specific information about them. So it's really simple. If you have your project, you simply come into the International Charitable Database, select from the drop down options, and then you receive all the different results we have available. Okay, excellent. Um, one other question that just came in. Someone said, you know, I'm not logged in, I'm on the home page. I'm seeing a login button, but not a, a register button. If you go to our home page, if you ever want to see what our, our current offer is, we'll have that on the home page. But also in the bar at the top, there'll be an orange button that says join. So and I will show that to you right now. There it is. When you're not logged in, you have an orange join button right here. And clicking that allows you to then join GrantStation. But I encourage you to currently join TechSoup. For only $99, you can receive access for a full year to GrantStation. And that's just today and tomorrow only. And with that, Aretha, I did it. I did it. We did a you webinar. Did. You did. You did. You did. Thank you so much, Jeremy and Kevin. Y'all are rock stars. And on behalf of TechSoup, we want to thank Grant Station for being one of our partners. Thank you, everyone who stayed with us. You guys are amazing. Make sure you take care of yourself as you're taking care of everyone else. Can you put some snaps, some thank yous in the chat room for Jeremy and Kevin? Great job. Thank you. Well, Aretha, this has been so much fun. Talk to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you so.